While it may be true that I am probably older than a lot of you guys watching this video and you guys might not get all of my 90s references, most of you probably do know the Wu-Tang torture sketch, right, from 36 Chambers, where they're all trying to outdo each other with increasingly convoluted and macabre methods of torture. Well, you can definitely picture Ramsey Bolton <laughs> listening and nodding his head in approval, right? Or, I don't know, maybe he's like, that's weak sh**. You should hear what we do at the Dreadfort. Which leads us to today's question. <laughs> Just what is up with House Bolton anyway? The Starks are skin changers and the Boltons are skin changers in a more literal sense. And then we have the faceless men who are also literally wearing the skins of dead people, but as living disguises with the aid of some kind of blood magic inside a temple with weirwood doors and chairs. Are all of these ideas related? And if so, how? And why is Arya Stark kind of like a through line between all of them, being a Stark skin changer who's recruited to the faceless men while wearing the identity of someone else and the livery of House Bolton while she's in service to Roose Bolton at Harrenhal? My friends, I've got a brand new theory for you today and it's gonna explain exactly what the ancient Bolton skinners and flayers were really up to, besides just torture. This new theory is even darker then the famous bolt-on theory, which I will briefly discuss as well. And although the faceless men are the key to understanding it all, the Starks and their magic are really what is at the heart of it all. So this is gonna be a fun theory to talk about. And I actually first laid it out about two hours deep in, the, uh, in part one of the Stark Theory Iceberg stream. So I thought I would make it its own little video to make it more accessible, what's more accessible than a theory about flaying and stuff. So I'll also add in some extra evidence that I've found since then and that some of you smart cookies in the comments contributed after the video. So I really hope you all enjoy this absolutely horrific theory, which I believe finally provides a satisfying explanation about House Bolton and their ancient enmity with House Stark. Hey there friends, David Lightbringer here, and I'm on the couch today because my new in-house video editor is using my computer. Well, I'm not sure this is exactly what I meant when I said I was looking for work. So how's it going over there, Rhaegar? You getting the hang of it yet? Well, Dave, you were right. There is a bit of a learning curve, but fortunately I ate one of these magic spoon treats earlier and I'm still all full of energy and ready for the challenge. New magic spoon? Uh, treats? Did you call the art? Wouldn't those have been sent to me? Are you opening my mail? Yes, Dave, they're Magic Spoon's new cereal bars. Here, open your mail. They have similar nutrition to a protein bar, but they're fun and delicious. They're the perfect high protein snack for when you're on the go. Or when you don't want to spill cereal milk all over your very hospitable friend's very expensive computer that he's letting you use to, to do his work for him. Well, it looks like Magic Spoon is at it again with their whole taking the sweet nostalgic taste of childhood and making them with better ingredients thing. That's, that's nice. 11 grams of protein, to be exact, with just one gram of sugar, one to two grams net carbs, and 130 calories per serving. And, of course, they come in two delicious flavors, peanut butter and a marshmallow. Wow, Rhaegar, you're really taking this whole helping out with the channel thing seriously. I appreciate that. You're quite welcome, Dave. I really do want to help out. But again, I'm just not sure people want to watch four videos about the Ironborn. I mean, they're just drunken pirates, really. Five, actually. We're, we're up to five Ironborn videos. I have a problem. They're spawning like deep ones. Yes, well, that is how that works. I've watched Nimble Dick Squisher Hunt, so I know all about that. Folks, if you want to try these chonky, crispy, fluffy, sweet and delicious Magic Spoon treats or their Magic Spoon cereal, you know what to do. Oh, I know. Let me say it. Click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen or go to magicspoon.com slash lightbringer. And don't forget the QR code lightbringer. That's right. And now that we're all fed, let's talk about House Bolton. Hey, Dave, Mr. Marshmallow has eyes just like my glasses. Do you think they saw our commercial and... So here we come to the Red Kings of Bolton. The Boltons have been kings for a long time, and if you look at the, you can see they have a very natural territory. Everything east of the White Knife. So from White Harbor all the way up to the Dread Fort and Long Lake, and then up to the Last River here. North of the Last River, they don't seem to ever control. That's like the Last Hearth and Carhold. But yeah, they've got a pretty big little chunk of land here that they control, and they, 
they controlled that right up until the Andal invasion. It wasn't until the Andals were arriving in Westeros that the Starks finally conquered the Boltons and unified the North. So that just tells you those Boltons held out for a long time. They were the, the fiercest rivals of the Starks. They lasted the longest thousands of years until the Andals. We're talking about from the long night until the Andal invasion. That's thousands of years. Okay. So they, they have burned Winterfell a couple times. Royce, the second Bolton, and Royce, the fourth Bolton, both did it. Um, Royce, the fourth, was called Red Arm for his habit of plunging his arm into the chest of his defeated opponents. They've always been gory folks. Um, it is said that they have captured a couple lords of Winterfell or kings in the north and tortured and flayed them. And it is even said that they have made cloaks of those Starks and that there is a chamber deep in the Dreadfort, a secret chamber where they keep those skins. I called it a hall of faces because it reminds me of the faceless men. And this is what we're going to get into here with these Boltons. So everybody has noticed that there is this three-way symbolism. We have skin changers who slip their skin with magic. They ast use astral projection to body snatch animals. Then we have the faceless men who peel people's faces off, dead people, and then glue them onto the faces of the living with some kind of blood magic. And that when they do that, the face is no longer a dead face, but a lively face that fools people. And Arya, of course, when she has the little girl's, the other little girl's, the dead little girl's face put on her, she then experiences the trauma of that girl's death being strangled. And so the memories, we see the memories come along with the faces. So we, people have always wondered, whatever the faceless men are doing, is that what the Boltons used to do? Now the Boltons just skin people to torture people. But is this a cargo cult thing? Is there an ancient magical reason that has been forgotten? George loves to do this, loves it. So we should think that way. We should wonder what was the original reason for skinning? It is magical. We've seen the faceless men do a certain amount of magic with flame and skinning. So there is some magic there, but what? Is it just disguise magic? So what's going on with these Boltons? They're skinning the Starks, and they fight the Starks really well. They held out for thousands of years against the Starks. How'd they do it? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, we've seen that there's body memory. Like I said, the faceless men, when they put a face on Arya, it's, it's just a dead face. But Arya relives the moment of death, and there's a psychic experience attached to the face. Melisandre talks about the bones remember and how you can make an illusion much more effective with bones like the lord of bones is bones or maybe davos's finger bones we've seen that the whites when you break their bones they stop moving finally uh, summer has to deal with that and she's out hunting like literally the hand is crawling around like thing from adam's family until summer cracks the bone cracks the marrow and it's only then it remembered that it was dead. So the bones remember, the face remembers. So that we, we can see there's a lot of body memory. Now, there's a thing called bolt-on theory. Bolt-on theory is essentially that Bruce Bolton is actually a thousand years old and he's just a spirit that swaps bodies one after another, right? And the, part of the evidence for this is the eyes. This is Ghibli Lynx's art. Ramsey and Roos both have eyes that are described as being like dirty ice. When Ramsey's mother presses the claim to Roos, it's the fact that Roos looks at Ramsey and says, oh, he has my eyes, so he can't deny that it's his kid. So it kind of gets you into this idea of the first night, where I'm, I skipped over this with Varamir, but Varamir is trying to impregnate as many women as possible in hopes that one of the children will have the gift, because the gift is rare. Um, unless you're a Stark, then it's more common. Might be a bloodline thing. But the Warg Kings would have done the same thing. Um, the Warg Kings, this is where the Rite of the First Night comes from. This awful tradition where the Lord of a land can go and sleep with a woman on her wedding night before the husband. The important thing is before. Because the Lord of the land in ancient times was always a green seer or skin changer. Or just the head of a tribe or clan. You can say it that way. So there may have even been a certain amount of like it wasn't even forced. Like the members of the tribe, they probably had beliefs based around this, like, oh, 
each generation we need a magical child to lead our tribe so that our tribe is strong, can fight against the other skin changer warlords. So the leaders of these tribes and houses and clans probably would have been doing this first night stuff to increase the odds of having a magical baby. And it's kind of the bolt on theory works like that. It's like Roos, you know, he had a son, Domeric, and then he had a bastard son, Ramsey, but it was Ramsey that had the ice eyes. And so that is what made Roos go, okay, I'm going to let you kill Domeric and make you my son because in time, then I can snatch you and live on in your body and then do it all again. It's a little far fetched, bolt on theory, but there's enough symbolism that implies it to be like, ah, you know, maybe there's something to that because there's definitely vampire Frankenstein vibes to the Boltons. But I've got a better theory. So, if the faces retain memory and the bones remember, stealing skins could be a way to steal magic. So, if you flay a Stark, wear their skin as a cloak, maybe you can steal their magic that way. And in fact, that would make a ton of sense. Uh, that would be why they're going after Starks and capturing Starks, torturing them and skinning them and then wearing them. It might have been a way to steal control of the Stark wolves, essentially. If you skin Rob Stark and wear Rob Stark as a cloak, maybe then you can control Grey Wind. Yeah, Sophie's on the same page as me. It's dark. We're going dark places here. I said it was a new Bolton theory. It gets worse, too. Um, because... Think about Ramsey and his dogs, his, his bitches, as he says. All of Ramsey's dogs are named after women that he's killed. And the whole point of naming the animals after the women is to imply them as the second life of skin changer women, of war queens. The women that Ramsey's killing are not skin changers. But by naming the dogs after the women, George is implying the original thing that happened. Originally, the women would have been like Stark warg queens or warg kings. And then when the Boltons were killing them, those people then ended up in the animals in a second life. But because the Boltons are stealing the skin of the skin changer, they now control the wolf that has the Stark body in it. So that's what they're up to by skinning the Starks. And Ramsey shows it to us. Well, hello everyone. Happy Halloween. Reading Rhaegar here. And for once, I get to talk about reading. That's right, I've got an update from a book. A 1989 book published by one George R. R. Martin called The Skin Trade. It's about werewolves and people who flay werewolves. And in that story, you'll never believe this, but flaying a werewolf is, in fact, a way to steal their power. So... This cockamamie Bolton theory that David Lightbring has come up with, and I don't subscribe to all of David Lightbringer's theories, I mean, who does? But it probably does have some merit, given that George R. R. Martin apparently already came up with the idea of flaying a werewolf in order to steal their magic before he ever wrote A Song of Ice and Fire. So there you go. And the main uh, antagonist in that book is called The Skinner. And one of Ramsey Bolton's boys is The Skinner. So, there you have it. Anyway, stay safe out there, folks. I've been reading Rhaegar, and now I'm going to get back to work. Thing, that's, that's nice. 11 grams of protein. Okay, another clue. Ramsay burns Winterfell, just like these two Royces in the past that flayed and wore stark skin cloaks. How does Ramsay get into Winterfell, guys? He disguises himself as Reek. He puts on a costume of a different person and gets into Winterfell by subterfuge, subterfuge and then takes it and burns it. So that sounds a lot like ancient Boltons taking Winterfell, burning it, and wearing the skins of Starks. So maybe they're doing multiple things. One, we've seen that the Faceless Men can use flaying for disguises. So if you captured a Stark and flayed him, then you could pretend to be that Stark and walk into Winterfell and open the gates from the inside. So maybe the order of the story is, it's not that the Boltons invaded Winterfell, captured the Lord of Stark and flayed him and wore him as a cloak. It was the other way around. They somehow captured a Lord of Stark when he was out off of his castle, flayed him, and then snuck into Winterfell and burned it. 
And that's essentially what Ramsey did. Now, bolt-on theory works on the idea that you can body snatch with skin changing. We see Veramir do it. Again, Veramir, a horrible person. He's showing us all the worst things that you can do with skin changer magic. And his last abomination is to try to steal Thistle's body. And he thinks to himself, Thistle doesn't have the gift, so I won't be able to use skin changer magic anymore, but at least I'll be alive. That, that's part of the idea of Bolt-On. It's like, if you find another skin changer and body snatch them, you'd still have their magic. So the Boltons were doing this by flaying, but they probably were doing it by body snatching too. Again, all these ancient Northmen would be skin changers and green seers potentially, the most powerful of them. And these red kings, the red arm, like the red weirwood leaf bloody hands, these red kings lasted against the Starks for thousands of years. So they must have been in possession of magic, just like the war kings and the marsh king and everyone, the barrow king and everyone else that opposed the Starks. So what was their magic? Well, they were doing flaying magic. So they were stealing Stark wolf possession by wearing their skins. And probably at various times, they might have been out and out possessing, like just body snatching people. And similarly, if you were to body snatch Bran, you could then control Summer. So you can see where all this stuff goes to. Like we should just use logic and ask ourselves, with the magical abilities George has shown us in the book, what would people do with them? We know you can body snatch. It's hard. You have to be powerful and it helps to weaken the, the person you're trying to body snatch. So that's maybe where some of the torture and stuff goes in. Maybe you torture this poor King of Winter down in the Dreadfort until he's so broken that he's easy to steal. And now you can control his wolves. So then we've got the weirwood part of this, okay? We know that the way that the sacrifices to the weirwood trees are done is by stringing people's entrails out in the branches. So what did Royce Red Arm do? Red Arm, like the weirwood red hands, he stuck his arm into his opponent's entrails and pulled their entrails out. So it sounds like Royce Red Arm is probably feeding the weirwoods with blood sacrifice. So whatever magic they're doing is connected to the Weirwoods as well. Um, so these, these might be the type of people like Azor Ahai that aren't born Green Seers, but even like break into the Weirwood net and steal the Green Seer magic, or it could just be that they're Green Seers and they're using the darkest form of Weirwood magic. Like what happens when you feed the blood to a Weirwood tree? What, 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 is, what does that do? I've got a couple ideas. But like, does the person committing these sacrifices get anything from it? Usually that's how blood magic works. Some dark sorcerer sacrifices a person or cuts Varys' junk off, and then they can do magic. So we should assume that these ancient Boltons who were pulling people's entrails out and sacrificing to heart trees were gaining some kind of magic from that. And probably the magic to do this flaying stuff. Because it's not just slapping the dead face on Arya's face. Like they cut Arya's face, so that her blood mingles, and then there's some amount of magic, and then it just sort of seals up and tightens, and then it's like good to go. It's not pure Frankenstein magic, like there's actual magic going on, or Frankenstein like weird science, like there's magic. So no, the Boltons aren't just sadists, they're magicians. That's what I'm saying. The current ones are, but it's cargo cult shit. So Ramsey, his latest woman is Jane Poole. He's already got a dog named Jane, and now he's married a Stark woman, but he's kind of torturing her. So it's it's the same idea of like Ramsey naming those dogs after women. It implies that the Boltons are killing Stark warg kings and queens and stealing their second lives and stealing their animals. So there you go. That's my Bolton theory, and I think it's pretty solid. I think it explains what they're doing. And I don't really think it's tied to the others necessarily. You know, the Boltons are pretty far south. They're nowhere near the wall. Night King, maybe he was a Bolton, they say. But that's about it. So really, I think the Boltons are basically malevolent weirwood users and skin changer stealers. Yes, it's an upsetting theory. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's what I got for you on the Boltons. Moving right along.